Hello and welcome to another Stephen Mendy's educational video. In this video, we are going to help you to understand how to solve the node and the mesh problems using the super node and the super mesh. If a circuit contains only current sources, it can easily be solved in a simple and straightforward manner by nodal analysis. And uh, that could be the subject of another video, but it's so simple that most people might be able to figure it out. I have notes which my students are using for that. If Likewise, if a circuit contains only voltage sources, it can be solved simply by mesh analysis, and there is something for that. So those are not the consideration. That's the precursor to what we're doing today. If a circuit contains both voltage and current sources, then we engage the super idea, the super mesh or the super node. To solve a circuit with both current and voltage sources, you would have to do one of two things. You would either use the super node, which contains a voltage source, in a nodal analysis, or you could use the super mesh, which would exclude the current sources and provide a um, KVL equation in a mesh analysis. So what does that mean? Well, this is necessary because you have no way of knowing what current flows through a voltage source. You know the voltage, but you don't know the current for that source. Likewise, uh, you don't know the voltage across a current source. You only know what the current is, but the voltage could be anything. So that's the reason why we need to employ this technique. So let's start with a simple circuit. There is your circuit on which you're going to attempt to use the super node idea. Now, we are going to do nodal analysis, but the presence of that voltage source between two nodes engages the super node idea. Notice that we have labeled the nodes. We have put a ground symbol on the bottom node, so that will be the ground, and all voltages going up through the branch legs will constitute V, V1, and V2 as shown in the diagram. So that's the first thing you want to do. You want to label your nodes. The next thing we have done is enclose the two nodes containing the voltage sources. And if you look at the enclosed surface, you will see that each one has four wires coming from it. So you can have four connections with current going in or out of that. We don't really need to use the one that includes the ground, but the other one is very useful, as we are going to see in a minute. First, look at it, and we see that we can write two little equations there in brown. It is obvious from a, a inspection that V2 is equal to 20 volts. And it is equally obvious that V1 is higher than V by 3 volts. Because look at the plus side of that 3 volt source that's enclosed in supernode 1. The V1 is 3 volts higher than whatever the V works out to be. So we can say that V1 equals V plus 3 volts. The next thing we do is we look at the first term. Notice the arrow that we've put on the 6K resistor at the top. 
And once we put the arrow, we have to put the voltage polarity. Now, it's easy to put the voltage polarity there because we can see that V1 is now going to be higher because the plus sign is to V1 than V2. So we say V1 minus V2 over 6. And that's a current. That's the current indicated by the red arrow. The next term is shown. Clearly, it is V1 over the 2K resistor. And likewise, that is a current flowing through to ground through that 2K resistor. Now, the next one is V over the 4K resistor. And then the last one shown there is the current coming in, which is 6. So that would normally be minus 6, but we put it over on the other side. And you can see clearly by looking at the four red arrows that those three going through the resistors add up to the 6 milliamps coming in. So now we employ those two equations V1 equals V plus 3, V2 equals 20, to write the equation in V only. So clearly V is the only variable. And then when we multiply out the denominators, separate the numbers onto the right-hand side, we end up with V equals 8 volts. So you should easily be able to come to that position and that is that. Now, what about this circuit? We're supposed to find the current I, which is shown there going through the 3 ohm resistor on the right. If we want to solve this by mesh analysis, we're going to need a super mesh. So what is a super mesh? Well, let's see what a super mesh is. A super mesh is a loop. Remember, mesh is loop that actually is more than one loop. Clearly, when we look at that green loop there, we could see we could actually have two. That green loop has bypassed the 5 amp current source completely. So we are looking at the resistors, the outside loop that consists of actually two little inside loop. A super loop can be any loop that is bigger than a single loop. So a super loop is going to encase several other loops. We hope you get that idea. Now we do the same thing. We put on some currents. And we see that um, we've had to add two currents to get the voltages on those resistors for our KVL equation. So we label one I1 and the other I2. And it's easy to write two equations for that because I1 is 5 plus whatever I2 is. Notice that the 5 is coming up here and joining the I1, sorry, the I2 and flowing into the I1. So the I2 is joining with 5 to make I1. So we write that as an equation. I1 equals to I2 plus 5. And then we see I itself is actually... What is I, good people? I is I1 minus the 2 amps that flows up here. Notice the 2 amps at this junction here is going upwards. So 2 amps is going upward, so we have to take away 2 from whatever I1 is to get I. So clearly, I is I1 minus 2. So thus far, thus good. So now we write our KVL equation going around the loop. We have 4, 4 I2. Notice it's there, 4 I2 minus... 1, because that's only a 1 ohm resistor, I1, minus 3I, 
uh, plus 38, sorry, minus 38, because we're going through from minus to plus. And uh, the minus 38 comes over on the other side, and we get that expression. Or we could say that the three voltages across the resistor must add up to the 38 volt source. So the only thing left to solve this problem now is to actually uh, rearrange our I1 and our I so that we can find I2 and I1 in terms of I. So we leave that little algebra for you to do because we need I1 and I2 to plug into our KVL equation so that it may be in only I. So from the top one, uh, we just... Uh, get uh, the I1 is um, I plus 2, just rearrange that bottom one, and then we plug the top one into the bottom one, and we find that I2 is actually I minus 3. So when we put those into that, that's what it comes out to. Substitute for the I2 and the I1, and now we have an equation totally in I. So then we just simplify it, and we find that I, our answer, is 6 amps. Now you see, you see that even though these circuits had three loops, they were very easy to solve. We didn't have any difficulty solving these three loop circuits. Because we use super node and a super mesh. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.